Hello guys, this is the Walkthrough House here, bringing you episode number 10 of my Hardcore Source of a Walkthrough. On the last episode, we arrived at Ecrotique City, and on this episode, I shall go over a bunch of stuff that needs to be gone over in Ecrotique City, and also, I would like to go through the bug catching contest that takes place on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. So, today is Tuesday, so I am going to give bug catching contest a try. And the reason why you might want to give a catching contest a try yourself is that there is three new Pokemon to get um, during bug catching contest. Obviously, like once they get the national Pokédex later on in the game, there's much more. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, right now, we just want to worry about the three new Pokemon you get pre-national desk. So, without further ado, let's just go right in. So, the first Pokemon you can get here, and it doesn't matter like what time of the day. Um, you first Pokemon you can get here is Venonat. Uh, Venonat is a bug and poison type Pokemon that evolves into Venomoth starting level 31. Venomoth is a pretty good Pokemon overall, but I feel like in game it's not as great because of its typing and all the poison type you go against in this game. And Venomoth also has like pretty good move pool, I think. It's not like the greatest. It learns Signal Beam, Sidekick, Bug Buzz. So it's pretty strong special offensive moves. And it has a 90, spe 90 base special attack um, to back it up. So I think it does pretty good. It's just that overall in the game it's not as viable because of all the poison types. The second Pokemon you can get here, and it's one of my favorite Pokemon to pick up during the bug catching contest is Scytha. Scytha is a bug and flying type Pokemon that evolves into Scizor if you give it a metal coat and trade it with one of your friends. One important note though, it is very preferable that you get Scytha with the, ob with the ability Technician because Technician makes it so that moves that have a base stat of 60 or lower have a 50% increase in power. So instead of doing 1 times damage, they do 1.5 times damage. So that's really good. Um, without Technician, the Swarm is just fine. I mean, obviously Technician is really good because you can really spam the move Aerial Ace and you'll do crap load of damage. But moving on to like the actual Pokemon stats, Scizor uh, has a 130 base attack stat and a 100 base defense stats. And as you can tell right from the bat, it's very offensive and also decently bulky. So it can take a few hits while dishing out a lot of damage. It has really good move pool and also has a really good TM move pool. If you get a Scizor or Scyther, my bad, with Technician, then it's highly recommended that you teach the Aerial Ace. Sorry, my phone went off there. Um. <clears throat> so, overall, Scyther is one of my favorites to pick up in this place. Uh, the third Pokemon you can get here is Pinsir. Pinsir is a bug type Pokemon that is not known to evolve into any other Pokemon. Uh, Pinsir has 125 base physical attack stat and 100 base defense stat. So once again, similar to Scizor, it's a very good Pokemon and very dominant. It is highly preferred that you get the Mold Breaker ability. And because Mold Breaker lets you hit... For example, let's say you teach Pinsir Earthquake. Mold Breaker lets you hit Earthquake to Pokemon that have Levitate. So that's it for the three Pokemon that are available here. Um, I'll see you guys back in Ecrotique City and... By the way, in bug catching contest, before I leave, you get to pick the Pokemon that you use to judge. So let's say you catch like three Pokemon, you can choose one to get judged. Or I don't know if you can choose one to get judged or if it's the last Pokemon to get judged. And you can keep the Pokemon that you get judged. So usually if I want like a Scyther or a Pinsir, I just come in and I get a Scyther and a Pinsir. And I just move to the right and exit and just end the competition. And I just leave. Do I, I still have 18 minutes. I don't really care. I'm not going to be a winner because I didn't catch anything. Um, how you win basically comes down to like the percentage, like how high of a health did you catch it in, the IVs the Pokemon have, and I'm going to leave a description, I mean I'm going to leave a link down in the description to the Bulbapedia article talking about the bug catching contest so you guys can know more about the rules for both 2nd gen and 4th gen Pokemon a bug catching contest. But for now, all the other participants who don't win anything get a Shed Shell. And I think the person who comes first gets a sunstone, and then post national desk, you get like a random evolutionary stone. Set shell, what it does is it lets you escape battles that you couldn't necessarily escape. For example, with a uh, me look or arena trap, and su such and moves like such and abilities that don't let, let you escape. Set shell makes you so that 
you can escape those battles. Anyway, I'm gonna see you guys back in Ecritique City. Alright, so we're back here at Ecritique City. Uh, right off the bat, there's a few things we need to do at Ecritique City before we can hit the gym, but let's see what happens when we do go to the gym, though. So there's this random weird person that's like, hey, the gym leader's not here, so you need to GTFO, and he just kind of kicks us out, too. It's like, I can walk myself out, but he just kind of pushes us out. And it's funny, because you can't see Flaffy right now. Hey, Flaffy, where you at? But he's just going to pop out. And it all of a sudden became darker because it hits 6 p.m. where I am at, so it hits dusk. So it becomes a lot darker all of a sudden. So obviously, if you guys didn't catch, Mori, the gym leader of Ecritique City Gym, has gone to the Burn Tower, which we will go to a little bit. One of the first things you guys want to do, though, is head to this place called the Ecritique Dance Theater. And there's some stuff going on in here, let me tell you. So there you go, that's another kimono girl, like similar to the one we saw in Ilex Forest. Um, and it, she's obviously being harassed by a Team Rocket grunt, and our job is to help them out. So I'm going to keep Flappy in front of my team, because she is not level 22 yet. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm really hoping to get her level 22. I mean, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident I'll get a level 22 by the end of this episode because this episode is going to be quite long. I'm going to try to finish the gym itself in this episode, so it's going to be quite long. So he only has a level 12 coughing, which kind of like takes me back to the last episode where I talked about. I wish like the AIs in game were like a little more challenging, and my sprites are kind of messed up, but they should fix itself in a little bit if I try to. So once you kill him or not kill him oh my god I'm so violent once you defeat him you can take your leave but this one guy will give you HM3 and it's surf I can't teach it any of my Pokemon yet because I don't have a water type Pokemon and I'm gonna leave really fast and fix my sprite so I can go back in and talk to a few people so this guy right here is the one that walks up to give you HM3 then there's the kimono girl you can talk to her and before she would have said something different about how like you like Pokemon and that some guy saw something in you. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see it, but it's not too important, I guess. So we deal with that guy, and let's move up here and see what's up here. Oh, what's this? Barrier station to the bell tower. No trespassing by the unworthy. Okay, who is technically the worthy, and who are you to decide, man? Let's talk to this guy. Past here is the bell tower. The tower was built as a place of rest for a Ho-Oh, the legendary flying type Pokemon. Fire and flying type Pokemon, excuse you. But oh well. I guess if it's fire, it could be Moltres, for all I know. Have you ever seen that Pokemon? Probably haven't. For all you know, you've probably seen like Moltres or something. And even Moltres is out of your league, man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted so much unnecessary time there. Anyway, so we can't go there yet. Um, we'll see what's up once we defeat Morty. See what we can get cooking over there. So to the right here is where the burn tower is at. And as you can tell, it's literally the burn tower. Like, the tower burnt down. So there's bell tower, and then there's burn tower. And we can go to the burn tower. And here in the burn tower... Right off the bat, we can see that we can see the three legendary dogs. On the left, there's Raikou. On the middle, there's Suicune. And on the right, there's Entei. I, my personal favorite is Raikou because I love Electric-type Pokemons. But yeah, isn't that right, Flaffy? Hell yeah. And Flaffy is holding something. Why were you ca What the? How did you get a fashion accessory, Flaffy? Are you stealing off of people? We're going to have a talk. Oh, very concerned about the room below. Oh, okay, you scared, bro? You scared, bro? Take a look with me. Hey, oh yeah. Anyway, so there's one new Pokemon you can get here. The first Pokemon you can get here is... Okay, I don't care, Chrissy. Stop talking to me. Anyway, okay, so the first Pokemon, the only one Pokemon you can get here is Coughing. Coughing is a poison type Pokemon that evolves into Weezing at level 35. Weezing is incredibly, is a very incredible physical wall and can take care of a lot of stuff. If you guys want to try out a new Pokemon, obviously, like, he's going to hard to have a hard time attacking stuff because it's a poison type and there's a lot of poison types in game, so it's not going to be very effective. But if you want a good physical wall because you plan on, like, getting a weak team or something and you want a good wall, coughing is definitely not a bad idea. 
Uh, anyway, so that's it for the new Pokemon that's available here. Moving on, we have these two people, and this one guy. My name is Yusin, I'm on the trail of a Pokemon named Suicune. Oh, well, he's right below you, dude. And he, okay, he has seen him, so apparently every time he tries to go down there, they run. Which is funny, because they could have done something much worse to him. And he's been chasing Suicune for 10 years, and I'm like, give up already, get a job. <sighs> Sorry, I had to get a drink of water there. But stop chasing a Pokemon for 10 years, dude. You get to see it. You don't You don't mean to capture it, do you? Just take a photo from up here, dude. Selfie. Anyway, so here we have Morty. Morty is helping out Yusin to get Suicune because he's helping a homie out. And because of that, he's not going to get the gym. Very irresponsible of him, but oh well. And up here, I would like to change my leading Pokemon to Kenya because there's Bambi. Hey, what up, bro? I hate you too, don't worry. So, we have a rival battle coming up. He has four Pokemon, Ghastly, Croconon, Zubat, and Magnemite, and Move Pool are going to be down in the description if you guys are curious. He starts with a Ghastly who loves to spam Curse, and so I started with a Kenya so I can knock it out in one hit. Flaffy is unable to do that because I've tried that in previous takes, and I need Flaffy to take care of Croconon, and if Flaffy gets cursed then she will not be able to do so so now she's gonna send out the magnemite to which I'm gonna send out my queen lava and in my previous six queen lava was not able to like take out magnemite with one flame wheel so I'm gonna try to ember and it's probably not going to oh it will okay so I guess magnemite is not especially defensive or his magnemite is not especially defensive I'm gonna send out my send out his croc and I'm gonna send out my flaffy and Flaffy should be able to take out Croconaw in about 3 Thundershocks, if I remember right. Because his Croconaw is going to be level 22. And, oh shoot, I used... Oh, he missed his attack of Scary Face. How do you miss Scary Face? That makes no sense. All you do is stare at the other person and make a weird face. And they get scared and they move slower. But he got paralyzed. Hopefully he gets hexed. No, he doesn't. Well, at least his speed is halved, if anything. He's gonna Thundershock. Keep thunder shocking, Croconaw. And its attack's going to miss again. You missed two scary faces. You're not very good at making fa scary faces, Croconaw. You suck at it. Hopefully, this will take me to level 22. And just a little off. This Zubat, for sure, his final Pokemon, is going to take me to level 22. And Zubat. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I was going to say Zubat loves to spam Supersonic in the beginning and just astonish you. But. I mean, fortunately for me, he missed the supersonic, so I was able to deal with it without much problems. So Flappy, finally level 22. Finally caught up with the bunch. And now I can finally set my Quilala in the beginning of the team. And train him up to level 24, because I trained by two level increments. Still need a fifth Pokemon on the team. And I need a new HM Slave to teach my... HM3 Surf with, and probably later, I need like a better Pokemon to like, yeah, I need six Pokemon, I can't be using like five Pokemon now that I think about it, even though I always do, it's like better for the walkthrough not to have like an HM Slave, because I look like a meanie, anyway, so down here, your moment you go, these three start losing their crap, and they start running all over the place, I don't even know how they exited, but Suicune here has like an eye on eye battle, which apparently he loses, because he ran, so that means we won, but what that did <clears throat> was that now Raikou and Entei can be caught in Johto and they'll be found in random places of grass and they'll be level 40. They'll usually switch positions and the moment you see them the first time they'll appear on your Pokenav. I mean Pokegear, sorry Pokenav was the old name. Pokegear and you can check the map and see where the legendary Pokemons are at. Uh, Suicune however on the other hand is not available till much later so we'll, we'll deal about that much later. However, Raikou and Entei can be caught now because they're starting to roam Johto. They'll be level 40, so if they show up now, they'll basically wreck your team. But they won't because they'll flee right away. So you get like one chance to like throw a ball. They they will appear a few times though. It's not like you can only catch. The, you only get like one opportunity. So that's okay. Anyway, now that we're done with the burn tower, we can head towards the gym. 
because Morty finally decided to do his, I mean, do, do his job. I'm gonna check my Pokemon to see their health. They're all fine. I can go and barge into the gym. So, the way this gym works, if you beat a trainer, the candles that are on top of their head, the orange thingy, or like the yellowish orange thingy, goes out. So you have to like figure out where to go from. So this woman is gonna spam Ghastly. So I'm just going to cut out this battle because you guys don't need to see this unless I turn level 23, which I think I will right now, please. Yep, there you go. Now I'm going to skip the rest of the battle because I have no need to show this freaking five ghastly army. And the last one is down. That was so annoying. I'm almost level 24. Just a slither. So you guys will see that her lights are going to go out. So you have to memorize like how to go through the people before you defeat them. And you have to defeat them, I think. I forgot. So in case in this trainer you have to like walk to the right, go up, then walk to the left. I think she has two haunters. So she's gonna give me quite a big chunk of experience. <clears throat> just gonna flame wheel. Hopefully hopefully if he lives the flame wheel, he's going to curse. No, he's gonna confuse her. Why would he curse? Because that would be so convenient. Now watch, I'm gonna die just to the freaking confusion. Yep, got a nightshade which does quite a bit because it does 20 HP because Haunter is level 20 so it does the same amount as your level. Oh, it's gonna hit Flame Wheel, okay that's good, good job Quilava, I never stopped believing in you. And I'm gonna be level 24, no problem. Defense Curl, nope, cause I don't care about defense curling on my Quilava. Haunter, send out Kenya. I would send a hair across if he could hit anything, but since most of his moves are fighting and normal, I can't really hit anybody here. And even if I had bug type moves, like bug types are not very effective against ghost types, so what's the point? Air Lace, please kill. It's gonna live by a little bit, and it's going to confuse Ray. What the hell, dude? Why you do this? I cray every team. So Kenya, since he, she is a traded Pokemon, or we, not traded, we is a gift Pokemon she's going to receive boosted XP so this XP we guys should be quite a big oh 810 so quite a big chunk like I was gonna say it's gonna take me easily to level 23 and literally is level 24 should be able to get her to level 24 before I even, even reach the gym leader so now we have this trainer and you move down you move to the left move up move to the left and move up okay and I forgot to switch out my Queen Lava well that's great I'm gonna do now is it's gonna send out Kenya because I just want to share that XP. It's gonna sucker punch is gonna fail and I'm gonna aerial ace, but it's gonna sucker punch again. But my aerial ace, please knock it out, please knock it out. You're level 23 down, but she, oh, okay, it's gonna live by quite a bit. It's gonna sucker punch me again. I don't really care. I'm not doing that much damage. And hopefully it's gonna get me at least halfway through level 24. Yeah, I mean through level 23 onto level 24, and just below half. And gonna move here, gonna move here, gonna move here, and then straight up. Notice me. Okay, this time you had to move down, right? Okay, that's cool. Or I could simply fall off and ruin everything. And I still forgot to switch out my Kenya onto the front of the team. God damn it. Now I'm not sure if she'll get level 24 before the gym leader. She probably won't. But hey, this Haunter is going to help the cause. Go Kenya! There you go, Ace, that thing. And it's gonna mean look. If I had Shed Shell, I could escape. But I don't need to, because it's dead. Or fainted. Dead's quite a harsh word, I suppose. And level. Oh, okay, this last Pokemon <clears throat> will take me to level 24. Oh no, I don't wanna switch Pokemon. Okay. Aerial Ace. And. Level 24, hey, what's up? So Kenya and 
my Quilava are level 24 now. I'm gonna switch Mareep to the front of the team because the second Pokemon that I don't want to take to level 24. Move down to the right, to the right. Oh, one too many times. Well, since I dropped below, as you can see, all the candles are lit back up, which makes no sense, but they are, so it's easier to navigate now. But the next Pokemon that, I mean, next Pokemon trainer that is coming up is the gym leader. So I might as well just go heal, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so back into the gym, all the candles are lit back up, so it's much easier to, like, navigate through these trainers. And we can go straight to the gym leader, Morty. It's good of you to have come. Here in Equity, Pokemon have long been revered. It's said that a rainbow heat Pokemon will come down to appear before a truly powerful trainer. I believe that tale, so I have secretly trained here all my life. As a result, I can now see what others cannot. So, after training hard, you just became a gym leader, not even a Pokemon League champion? Wow, you suck, don't you? Anyway, here we have Morty, the ghost type gym leader. He has four Pokemons. He first starts off with a Ghastly. Ghastly has the moveset of Mean Look, Curse, Spite, and Lick. It loves the curse. It's a brat. Yeah, he loves cursing. And it's a Ghost and Poison type, so if you hit it with a... Oh, okay, it's gonna Mean Look just to prove me wrong. Okay, that's great. But Ghost and Poison types, so Psychic types are very super effective against Ghastly, and Ghost type is super effective against Ghost type itself, too. It's gonna Spite and reduce the PP of my... Thundershock by 4, but Thundershock has like a crap ton of PP, so I don't really care if 4 if it gets like removed. Anyway, you take down a Flaffy pretty, I mean, take down Gengar pretty easily. Not Gengar, my bad, Ghastly. Now, it's gonna send out the strongest Pokemon right away, which is a Gengar. I don't know if I wanna. I'll keep Flaffy, even though I might have to sacrifice it, just so I can T Wave. Because Gengar is pretty fast. And it's gonna miss Hypnosis, uh, because it loves. Okay, so. Gengar has a moveset of Mean Look, Hypnosis, Sucker Punch, and Shadow Ball. It's carrying a Citrus Berry, so if you get below 3 fourths health, it's going to consume that, obviously. So Gengar overall is very specially offensive and very speedy, so you need to be very careful. I keep... And look at how much my Thunder Shock does to this thing. It's level 25. Oh my god. Oh, the hacks. The hacks are in my favor. And it's never not going to be unpar... I mean, it's never going to be unparalyzed. So, I can just keep doing this, and unfortunately Flaffy cannot retreat now, but that's okay. And, Jim Lee is still need full restore, so I don't need to worry about the paralysis going away. I can just keep spamming this. It's gonna Hypnosis me, which kinda sucks, because I know the Dream Eater is coming. I could just kinda troll him, and give it an Awakening, just to like, screw with it, and get a turn myself, because Gengar's speed is reduced in half, because of paralysis. It's gonna Shadow Ball, what the... I was gonna do a crap load. Oh god. I'm surprised that didn't knock me out in one hit. The Thunder Shock. Please, hacks. Hacks. Yes. And it's probably going to Super Potion the moment. The moment I'm close to knocking it out. Watch. A Shadow Ball. Okay. Well. Bye, Flaffy. I'm proud of you. You did great. Remember, once you evolve fully, you become like the strongest Pokemon in my team. So that's cool. I'm gonna send out Queen Lava. Just end it with a Flame Wheel. Kaboom! I will end you. There you go. And Quilava is easily level 25 after this. And my phone keeps going off. It's annoying. So his final, his I mean his third Pokemon is a Haunter, and I don't know which one of the Haunter it is because there's two Haunters, but we'll find out once we see the level. And it's a level 21 Haunter, so it knows to move Hypnosis, Curse, Nightmare, and Dream Eater. So obviously it will try once again to Hypnosis you. I will keep flame wheeling and it's gonna miss the hypnosis thank goodness please knock it out in one hit please 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 oh, okay knock it out in two hits not bad hypnosis is gonna miss again cuz Pokemon loves me today and I'm gonna easily sweep out the haunter with two flame wheels now there's only one Pokemon left which is his level 23 haunter and the level 23 haunter has the moveset of mean look uh, sucker punch and nightshade uh, now I'm just gonna spam Flame Wheel, and hopefully this works. He's gonna nice shape, so he's gonna do 23 damage. Not too bad because I'm full health. Hopefully it's another two hit. Yes, it looks like it's a two hit. Please be two hit. And please, 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 please. And yes. Okay, so Quilava is actually gonna be level 26. 
Hell yeah. So we're level 26, we don't learn any new moves, and we defeat Morty, we get 2,760 Poké Dollars for it. And we also get the Gym Badge, Fog Badge from Morty. So now traded Pokemon up to level 50 will include you, I mean, I mean, will listen to you, including our Kenya, who is gifted Pokemon. We also get Shadow Ball TM, which is really good, and we get to finally use Surf outside of battle. So now we have our first four gym badges, which is really cool. Alright, time to exit this gym by just kind of falling off. Alright, so now that we're done with our fourth gym badge, I think it's a good place to end our episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.